Hey, what's going on guys? It's Havo back again, and it's a new year. 2018 is upon us. Uh, been kind of quiet on my channel for a little while now, and you know, it's partly due to the fact that I'm probably gonna be moving, uh, and I'm getting my house ready for, for showing, and painting, and upgrading things, and just fixing a few minor things here and there to get the house you know, showable, and so that's been part of my time, but the other part of my time has also been working on a few projects. Uh, obviously, I'm still working on my game. I'm planning on having a video to showcase some things very, very soon. I know that I've been saying that for a while, so knowing me, you know, uh, I have really bad estimates, uh, but with that said, you know, I really think I'm close to showing you something. It's it's kind of hard because you you have a goal and you start to uh, get closer to that goal, but then you add things, new bugs come up, and before you know it, you start to push your goals back and you're like, well, what if I add this? Or let me throw the ball this way or catch the ball that way. So you begin to have uh, things that kind of creep in, and that's why games... Part of the reason why games take so long, it's not so much that they don't have a plan or a clear plan, but you need to you need to draw them. That's part of the problem, but you you need to definitely be smart with the game that you're making, you know, like in terms of the gameplay. You know, you, you want the game to be enjoyable and you begin to add in aspects. I'm not the kind of person, there are plenty of people out there that do this, but I'm I'm not um, the kind of game developer that creates this huge design document. Even when I was in college or even in the business, uh, the corporate world, I was never the kind of person that laid everything out and then, you know, stuck to that exact formula to finish the, uh, the task. Uh, I've always been kind of go by the, you know, by go with the flow and kind of evolve and prototype very much with the way that we uh, do agile development where it's very prototypical uh, you go back and forth you you add a new requirement a new feature and then you look at it and you and you re uh, analyze it and a lot of that tweaking uh, takes a lot of time so with that said the game the football game that i'm making that i'm going to be announcing the name i'd like to hear if you guys uh, have any thoughts on that and what you think you know, if you think the game would be, uh, if the name would be a good name for the game. Um, but yeah, so this video is more about All Pro Football, okay? All Pro Football 2K8, for those of you who may not know what it is, is the best on the field, uh, at least in my opinion, and a lot of other people who are simulation style sports guys they, a lot of us agree that All Pro Football 2K8, which is based off of the 2K sports engine that was built off of the ESPN 2K5 uh, game, uh, that game has the best on-field gameplay to date. And that's a very well-known fact. Uh, you can say it's opinion, um, but it's closer to a fact than an opinion. On the field, it is probably the best gameplay. So what does that mean? That means that I'm never going to give up, at least I don't think I am, ever going to give up on working on the All Pro Football Editor. And every time I think of something new or I get the energy or motivation to go in there and start to, you know, uh, uh, research and tinker with the code and and the, the hex file and try to research and unlock new things for the game. Um, I, I, I get crazy and I want to go into it and I want to start to, to investigate and research, right? But that takes a lot of hard work. And that's part of this video. Part of the video is one, to tell you guys how much work it takes. And you know, I'm always telling you guys about how much work it takes to do the game and how much work it takes to do the hex editor or the hexing for the... Um, the research for the all pro football engine and the coding for the, the editor and all that stuff takes time. 
Um, making a roster, making, let me, let, me, let me step back, making a quality roster takes a lot of time and energy. And uh, the guys who slap things together, just jot down the names, put whatever stats they think are fair and throw the game out there, that's not roster creation at all. That's just, I don't know what you call it, it's fabricating the, the truth of, of the matter. And if you want to make a good roster, uh, now I'm going on a tangent here, but if you want to make a good roster, you have to have, not only do you have to have the, the roster fit exactly what the real life counterpart has. So what I mean by that is if you're making the Bills team, for instance, which go Bills, by the way, they made the playoffs. The, uh, they didn't go far. I mean, we had a good chance to beat Jacksonville, but that's another story. The, the point that I'm trying to make here is that you go through, you create every player that matches the real life uh, team. And the depth chart matches up, the positions, the, all the biographical information, the gear that they're wearing is another important thing. I'm very much about player likeness and I want the players to look exactly how they look in the NFL, right? So the roster creation is very important. That's the look of it, right? And the depth chart and everything. But then you also have, uh, especially for all pro football, you have the attributes and the abilities and you have a whole nother layer, especially with the abilities, because normally games have just the attributes like speed and strength and jumping and passing accuracy, passing strength, so on and so forth. But with all pro football, you have abilities. You know, you have deep threat and you have, you know, QB cadence and you have uh, QB laser arm. Uh, you have hops. You have so many different types of abilities, which makes that game, which is one of the main reasons why that game is really awesome because it it gives you more personality for each player. Each player has their own feel and look and style, whether it be their running style. Some players run really quick finesse. Some run more power and slow and rigid and rugged. And that's what makes that game part of what makes that game second to none when it comes to the on-field gameplay experience. But as you all know, that game, for those that have played it, that game is lacking one thing. And the one thing that it's lacking is franchise mode. Uh, at least when it comes to the playability of the game, the replayability. And the other thing it's lacking, which is a very, you know, it's a very intuitive thing, is there's no NFL license. There's no... There's no real players in there, real teams, NFL logos, and that's a big part of it. So, so what people try to do is recreate those teams as best they can. I think they come out really, really close. Um, and then obviously the, obviously the graphics are not as good as you, know, as you get with the current gen, right? So anyway, so the point that I'm trying to get to is franchise mode. And I mentioned this on the show not too long ago when I was doing the uh, show with Geddon that, you know, I miss, but I'm also very busy. So, you know, it, I'm at peace with that right now. Um, hopefully somebody can keep going with it. I know Retro Resolve, if you're watching this, you know, thanks for doing it, man. You got, you're doing a great job. But even you, I know it's hard to find time, right? Um, franchise mode. So I mentioned franchise mode in one, on one of those shows. And I don't know if it was because we were moving to the next topic or we were running behind, but we really didn't get in depth with franchise mode. And I mentioned something that I was thinking about that I think would be really awesome to have in the game. And that would be the ability to look at the roster file from a season file perspective, right? So get the editor to import the season file and all I've been able to do up to now is the roster file import. But the season file is totally different. The roster file ends in ROS. That's the file extension. But the season file ends in FXG. And it's larger. 
right? It has a schedule and it has stats. It has all sorts of things in there that the other one doesn't have, right? So the editor has never been able to read that file. I've never worked on that file. So in the first step in order to look at the season and to try to think about a franchise mode, which I'll get to in a minute, and I know this is going to be a long video, guys, so, you know, hang in there, break it up in parts if you want, but I'm going to load it raw like this. I'm not going to do much editing anymore. Um, so hopefully this works for you. <clears throat> um, if not, then my bad. But the, the season file would be the first thing, right? You need to learn how to read the file. What's different about that file? Where are all the pointers that I have? So pointers to the players, to their skills, to their abilities, to the, uh, the names. Everything about the roster file has to be kind of redone in a sense to remap out in the season file. And there's so much work that goes into that, you know, because my, my goal would be to, let me, let me cut to the goal actually. The goal would be to get the season working in the editor, right? So you can take a season file, you can basically do editing on it, just like you would do a regular roster. You can change names if you want, you can do all sorts of stuff, but really what, what, it, what it is is to get the season file to import all the stats, the player stats, the team stats, all of those stats to import as well into the editor. And what you could do is you can take the editor and make it a multi-season franchise, right? So my, my vision would be, and this is why I'm doing the video, I really wanna hear your feedback. If anybody out there is interested, how many people are interested, because this is a monumental task. It's so much work. It takes so much time. You guys have no idea. When I ask for a donation of $10, that's nothing. That's like, you know, that I would pay someone a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks. And it's not because I'm rich. It's because that takes a lot of time. Like it's crazy. You know, you could work a 40 hour work week and most people make between, you know, depending on your job, you can make between 20,000 a year to, you know, upwards in the six figures, right? A 40 hour work week could bring in some change. It could bring in 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 8,000, 10,000. Depending on who you are, you can make a lot of money, right? And the amount of hours it takes to do what I'm trying to do is hundreds of hours, not 40 hours, hundreds of hours, hundred, one, zero, zero, right? If you make five bucks an hour at a hundred hours, well, guess what that, that's $500, right? That's if you make $5 an hour, which is below minimum wage. It's $500. If you do 200, that's $1,000, right? So, and that's like the extreme low level. But if you're looking at a decent job where you're making maybe 20 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour, let's just say 20. 20 bucks an hour times 40 is, you do the math, 80, 800, right? So um, 20 times 40 is, 800. So, and I've made, I've had jobs where I've made more, much more than that, double that, more than double, more, triple that. But let's just say 20 bucks, that's $800 for 40, 40 hours, right? 100 hours is $2,000. Okay. Just to put it into perspective. Um, but let's go back. So my and I'm all over the place, guys, so I apologize. I don't, I'm not scripting this. So my goal would be to have the ability to take the All Pro Football franchise or season file, excuse me, not franchise, season, and bring it into the editor. Like I said, read it, know where the stats are, schedule, all that stuff. Be able to make a season based off of your schedule, right? So be able to alter the schedule and... Uh, basically create a season mode, alter the schedule, edit the schedule to your liking. The game only has 24 teams, so you have that limitation. You don't have 32 that you can play in a season. But even with 24, you create a season, you have all your teams, you have your players, and 
what you do is you can bring in your file through USB, FTP, if you have a modded Xbox, you bring it, and by the way, this is for Xbox 360 only because the PS2 I don't mess around with, I don't have one, or PS3, I don't have one. And it's a lot more work to do the PS3, especially when you don't have one. So for those of you guys who want a PS3 version, just go buy an Xbox 360. I mean, they were practically giving them away at GameStop during the um, holiday, the, the last holiday season. So you guys can get an Xbox 360. It's much cheaper and faster to get it that way than to have me do all the coding for a PS3. Uh, but the point is that you could bring in the file into the editor and the editor can read all your stats, show you all your stats just like you can in the, in the game, but show you your stats for every player, not just the league leaders, for every single player, every team, not just your team, every single team and every single um, stat that, that the game gives, right? But the secret would be at the end of the season, and depending on how much there is to unlock, you could, you could basically track all of that information. And if you get to the point where you can see if you made the playoffs or not, or if you won the Super Bowl or not, you can track all of those stats. And let's say you do the first year, right? You end the year, you take all of those stats and you dump them into the, the, uh, a file, right? And so this file has all of your teams, it has all of your players, it has all of the stats. And you basically say, you know what? Archive the first season. I'm gonna move to season two. And then you start up a brand new season. You, you change the roster around. I mean, ideally it would be awesome if this, there was a system, whether it be a website or a program like the one I'm making or I've made with the editor where you have a real franchise, you have stats, you have, you know, emails that come in, just like the out of the park baseball uh, manager game. That game is just a text sim. They have some little graphics going now to show you the gameplay to simulate the gameplay. But when you're playing that game, you feel like you're a manager of a team. You feel like you're in a franchise and you have notifications, you have trades, you have drafts. You could get crazy with this and build a uh, football manager game, which I know there's a few out there, um, like front, front Page Sports, I think, I think is one of them, and there's a football manager game out there. But basically make a game that's a tech sim game, but it, it's based off of your roster from all pro football. Now, how cool would that be? I mean, that's like the ultimate pie-in-the-sky dream because making a tech sim sports management game takes years and years of development. It's not a two minute thing. Ask the guys at Out of the Park Baseball. Ask Rich Grissom, who play, who you know, who works for them from uh, Press Row Podcast, for those of you who don't know. But that's like the pie in the sky, crazy, crazy, crazy thought, but that's how far we can get. I'm talking about making something that would just say, okay, here's my season, here are my stats. I'm going to season year number two I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my own roster trades, fake it, you know, bring in some new rookies, modify, you know, get rid of the retired guys, make your trades. You could do whatever you want. You could literally do whatever you want and make trades. All that stuff could be manually done. And you could, um, you could replicate and mimic, you know, a real NFL season or a real football season, whatever, whatever league you're looking at rep, uh, reproducing. And you can go to year two, and then year two, all your start, all your year, yearly stats will be refreshed, right? But your franchise stats, your year one stats will be your career stats, right? And you could see in the editor, you can take your file, plug it in, and you can see year one, year two, year three. You can see them accumulate. You can see that, hey, I've played five seasons with these teams. Here are my total stats. And that's what gets me excited. You know, you have a rookie quarterback come in, you have a uh, Jameis Winston quarterback come in, and you have your 10-year franchise, and you can see what he's done over 10 years. And you've never been able to do that in all pro football, unless you're a crazy, crazy, crazy freak uh, sports guy, and you sit there and manually hand write every single stat into a spreadsheet, and you're tracking it manually. Yeah, you could do it. But... Most of us don't have the time or the energy or the interest in doing that. So what I'm talking about in this video, guys, I'm gonna end it 
pretty much here. I'm going to close out with this. I want to know how many of you guys are interested in having this type of multi-year franchise mode in All Pro Football using the All Pro Football Editor because I want to hear your feedback because depending on the interest, I want to also think about what kind of compensation are you guys willing to give in order to get this. I'm not trying to solicit people for money. I don't need the money. Um, it's more of if I'm going to contribute all my hours as a, as a SIM community member, what are you going to contribute? You know, what's your contribution? And I'm not, it's so much work that it's almost like making a brand new editor, um, like the one I've already made for All Pro Football. So with all of that work that goes into it, I need to come up with a way to uh, justify the hours and the work. And so I want to hear what kind of interest you guys have. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you're interested or not. Let me know if this is something that you don't even care about. Tell your friends, ask your friends, put it on your YouTube channel. Find out, let's find out from the community who wants this. And once I get a feel for the interest, then I'll figure out, then I'd like to hear even also in the comments, what do you guys think would be the best way to, you know, to uh, provide donations for this basically. Um, you know, I've given the all pro football editor out for $10 donations on my website, but there's no key. There's no, there's no copyright stuff in there. You could give it to your friend. I've totally, you know, uh, I've been pretty impressed with people because I don't think they're just giving them away. Um, but at the same time, I know that every person that uses the all pro football editor, I can guarantee you there's at least one person that got it from their friend. Matter of fact, the editor was the older versions of the editor were out on the internet, and I may have done that too, but the bottom line is that I haven't been locking this down. But with this new version, I think for the amount of work it takes, I'm trying to think of a way where it makes sense for me, because I'm not making really any income right now uh, while I make my game, what the interest would be, number one, and then also what you guys would be willing to contribute and how you think the donation aspect of it would would uh, you know work out. So with that, I'm gonna leave you guys. It's been a 22 minute video. If you're still around, thank you for watching. Thank you for being a subscriber. If you're not, subscribe. I'll have more videos coming soon. And uh, let me know if you enjoyed the video or if you didn't. And I think this is a great idea, not because I'm coming up with it, but because I think that game is awesome. And uh, I, like many people, hate Madden. I do not like the game. I don't like where it's been. I don't like where it's going. And, you know, it's not... You know how I feel about Madden, if you watch me. So, let's give some more life into a game that really mattered. And I want to hear your comments below, if you guys can. And if not, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.